Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join his mission. Recently, you've been uh, heavily involved in assisting Afga- Afghans who are fleeing their country after the Taliban regained control. Tell mm-hmm. me more about that because um, it's tough to get in, maybe near impossible to get into Afghanistan right now, but you are having direct impact to Afghans. Uh, can you tell me more about that initiative? Yeah, so that's, you know, that's one of those things that you wake up at January 1st this year and it wasn't a thought and here we are. So the way all this got started was um, a friend of a friend called us, called uh, my wife and was talking about the Afghans and something she was involved in. And she says, oh, you need to talk to my husband or either that or I can't remember the whole story. How, But anyways, friend of a friend gets in touch with us. I'm finding out what she's doing and she's asking me, can you help me with um, networking? Uh, she was involved with a group of people actually getting, helping Afghans escape a- out of Afghanistan. And this was still, the US military was still on the ground, but they're definitely in the news, were talk- they were talking about them exiting and all that. Um, this is when pretty much they were uh, at Kabul airport and nowhere else. So I started helping them make connections. I got, I spoke with the CEO of the organization involved with that and started helping her connect with some people I knew. That got me thinking because as I'm watching the news, I'm listening to her and hearing the stories. I'm thinking we've got to do something as an, as a ministry, uh, not just me helping her, but what is it, can we do? So I gathered, um, two groups of people within our ministry. One uh, was in a bordering country and one was in a, uh, a non-bordering country, but not very far. Both of my new Afghans would probably uh, migrate too. And we started talking to them, making plans. Uh, we sent a, a kind of a, a scouting team up to an area near the border to see what was going on, who was there, were they crossing, what were the needs, things like that. And then we began planning in this other country and then, so when we sent the team up to look, uh, they came back with just need after need after need. And uh, this is still the height of news coverage. Now there's hardly any coverage of what's yeah. going on, at least in the U.S. That's and so this was the height. It? That's how it always It is. I mean, it, it, is it probably has a is. month. Yeah, I say it has a, a month lifestyle in hmm. the news yeah. uh, for something like this. So I knew that I needed to, if we're going to do something, I need to jump on it now while it was fresh in people's mind and while people were talking about it. And so they came up with a plan on the field. They sent it to me um, and we said, yes, let's run with it. I started uh, raising money for it. So basically what happened, uh, kind of this is our first phase. We've got another phase we want to get into as well, is we identified 100 families that had recently crossed the border uh, they were in a place where no one was helping them. So uh, we bought um, a lot of food, a month's worth of food. We bought these giant water containers and water and delivered it to them. There, it was split up into two, um, two deliveries. We're going to do a second one soon. Uh, and then the second one, actually, as he went to deliver the first set of aid, came across these um, disabled Afghans that they became disabled through the war wow. over the last 20 years. So he came back and said, we've got to help them as well. Of course, all the money raised was only enough to help the ones we had originally were going to help. But thankfully, God came through. And I'll even say a group of people, and I won't even mention the country because I, I don't even... Um, I don't know that they'd want me to because I don't even know it's that safe to, but a country in Asia, uh, they just sent a bunch of money to help with the Afghans. And it was a bunch of local people who wanted to help and they didn't know where to help. And I knew one of the guys and he said, ah, we'll just send it to them. So they, they really helped us over the top to help us with these, uh, the disabled Afghans. At first, I thought it was just 60 disabled Afghans. She says, no, 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 it's 60 disabled plus their families. Wow. Oh, and by the way, we need 25 wheelchairs because some of them are kind of crawling on the ground, <laughs> can't get around. So uh, we're just doing all this. But the point of us doing this is not just to deliver aid. I mean, sure. this guy is always sharing the gospel wherever he's at. Aid or no aid, he's sharing the gospel. So he's in there doing his best. 
with translator sharing the gospel. He's going to go back. Um, he's making plans to do regular visits now. Um, and then our second phase is, and I can't say where because I don't want to get them in trouble, but uh, you, roughly about 1,500 came um, uh, quietly into this country, and and they just so happened to land in a community where one of our peop- where our, one of our missionaries lives. Wow! And so he's he's starting to put together something, and he knew that there were some Afghans already there, but with these 1500 showing up, he's, he's really gearing up to try and serve them, help them, uh, help figure out how to help the kids with their education, how to help them learn trade so they can find jobs where they live now. Cause otherwise they won't be able to find any and, and feeding them for in the interim, trying to find food for them, things like that, because it's just stuff they don't have at this point. Um, it's, it's really just brought to light just the plight of refugees because it started really going to the Middle East this summer of working with refugees there from another country and just hearing their stories. Um, most of them, they're not choosing to do this. They don't want to do this. They want their countries to be at peace. They want to be back in their homeland. They want to be back in the careers that they were in, but they're forced for various reasons. Uh, this case being the Taliban and the oppression there uh, other countries, it's civil war that gets them out. Um, then you have like people like the Rohingya or the Rohingya or however you probably may be mispronouncing it, but uh, you have war there and, and, and people targeting certain groups of people just because of who they are. These people are just in dire straits. I mean, they desperately need help. And I'm just, the, I'm convinced no matter how and no matter what happens, the church just needs to step up and do something. Yeah. Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join his mission. This podcast is powered by Within Reach Global. Subscribe, watch, and listen on YouTube today. Visit missionspulse.com.